kings, queens, and everyone in between, welcome back to Gears and Queers. I'm Jake. And I'm Chris. And today we've committed Grand Theft Auto by stealing this lovely 87 Supra from my roommate to get out and enjoy the lovely Atlanta spring weather. But really, what we want to do is walk you through this third gen non-turbo Supra and tell you why you don't always need the most high performance version of an iconic car to have just as much fun. Like we said, this is a 1987 A70 Supra as a non-turbo model, so this is the 7M GE engine. 1987 was also the year that the turbo model was first offered, so this is sort of like a very foundational family member for the Supra formula that we've known to sort of grow and love. Um, this is also the splitting point for the turbo and non-turbo, so while we all want to talk about the A80 generation, the 4th gen, the iconic Fast and the Furious, 2JZ engine family, and then what the a90 generation that everybody is up in arms over which we did a comprehensive review of six and four cylinder models so go peep that we kind of wanted to like bring it back to basics and talk about how you don't always need the turbo and you don't always need the most high performance version to have a lot of fun in a great chassis and also the turbo models are like unobtainium you can't find these anymore and you can find a clean naturally aspirated 7m for a reasonable amount of money and this is less than a hundred thousand miles so Let's talk about why it's still great. Let's talk about styling because this is pretty classic late 80s, much wedge. You know, I mean, it's a classic Grand Tour shape, but wedge, hello, look at the material. Is it as alluring as, I don't know, uh, an A90 generation? Mm, I think it's more attractive. That car is very bulbous and soft. This is very sharp and wedgy, and it looks like a doorstop, but in a very nice way. We also have the optional target top, which, I mean, come on. You have to, you absolutely have to. We've got pop-ups, of course, it's the 80s. Um, but I think the best part of this car is the front end. Like, this very wide, mean, sort of squinty face. And I also think this looks better than the turbo models, because on turbos, you got a little insert right here that kind of obscures this front grille section. And I feel like this looks a bit more open, and especially from here, very low, very wide. I enjoy it finished in a lovely light blue metallic shade especially compared to like how soft the a80 got and now the a90 which i think looks good a lot of people really don't but it's a little palette refresher in the middle of a family lineage absolutely. the middle child the middle child and we know what that feels like right absolutely all right now we're in the interior of the 87 supra and it's pretty cute i love a color interior my honda has a burgundy one so loving the blue here this is velour leather was optional but I think this is pretty cute. We've got some tightly bolstered seats. They're kind of small. If you're a bigger person, this is going to be a tight fit. But we do have adjustable lumbar for the driver's seat. Pretty nice. Loving the like retro touches. This shifter, though, is so tall. The throws are ridiculous by modern standards. But otherwise, we've got clear logical gauges, oil pressure, voltmeter, in that in the turbo that's a boost gauge we do have this aftermarket momo steering wheel i'm not a really big fan of it alcantara um, alcantara on touch points nasty touch nasty touch we don't like that but let's be real here the star of the show the target top all the benefit of a convertible all the convenience of having a sunroof except for the whole part we have to take it off and put it in the back hey but you get a fun little tool I mean, look at her with her own bag. Who doesn't like That's a goodie incredible. bag? But yeah, I think there's something exciting about interiors from this era. If there's the looming threat of no airbags and this particular model doesn't have ABS, you know, live a little. What can I say? The car's not going that fast anyway. This car does have the original radio and it does have this awesome graphic equalizer. Um, the speakers, they are every bit as old as this car is and they sound like it. But hey, aftermarket can fix that. There's something to be said for a very loud, stylish, slow car from the 80s. And uh, this one is loud. is a little worse than her bite, I'd say. Just a little bit. Let's quiet her down because we're 
finally behind the wheel and we can talk about why this naturally aspirated super experience is pretty sweet. Yeah, let's talk about driving position really quick because we both agree it's a little bit weird, but I think it's important to keep in mind that this was more of a like grand touring car, right? not an out and out sports car. So it's kind of unfair to think of it as such, but even so in these, you know, velour, deep buckets. Lovely blue velour. We love to see it. Yeah, they are quite narrow and they're a little higher up than I'd expect and there's not as much adjustment, but you know, 80s Japanese cars, it's they're not going to be a form fit for the uh, the American man exactly. or woman or person in between. Or so we've been talking about this all day as to like, you don't necessarily need the highest performing, whether it be turbo or GTS or like whatever the, whatever the top level moniker is, is not necessarily always what you need. And this car kind of makes up for its, uh, I don't know, weaker 7M naturally aspirated heart because it's a sweet little chassis. It is. This one does appear to be lowered, uh, at least on springs. I bought so springs. it does corner more flatly than you would expect a stock one to be. And of course it does have a full header back exhaust. So it is louder. Very loud. <laughs> I think that makes it feel slower. Honestly, it's, we're talking zero to 60 on the, the NA variant of around seven ish, maybe higher seven seconds. The thing is the soundtrack is what makes it exciting. And the fact that I don't know, I mean, we haven't driven a turbo, so I can't like speak to like, but it, I would imagine that's a higher stakes game. You know, if you had a two JZ, uh, fourth gen Supra, like you're more conscious of the fact that you're driving something that is much more higher priced in the market. And like these cars are rare, especially these higher performance variants. And you're gonna be more conscious of that if you're absolutely on it all the time. Whereas this, definitely not gonna kill you. I mean, neither would the turbo, it's only like 30 horsepower more, but it just feels a bit more willing to be grabbed by the scruff of the neck and tossed around a little bit. Yes, absolutely. There's also the fact that like this car, 85,000 miles was 10K. Yeah, guess how much a turbo under $100,000 would be? I don't. Double, triple, more? I don't even know. Like, yeah. it would be ridiculous. And the owner of this car sometimes dailies it. So bringing it to Chris to pick him up today, I just floored it between second, third, and fourth. Went nowhere. <laughs> but it sounded good and it felt, well, it sounded interesting. And it felt good. How would you describe the character of this engine? Loud. And linear. The it, most linear engine this in the is world. the most linear there is no change in the pulling force no. of the of the engine all the way to red line no. it is just accelerating it, it, it's amazing it is a 24 valve twin cam yeah no no variable no cam phasing nothing no. like that so this car does have the optional targa roof we talked about that but it does not have the sport package that all turbo cars got, which netted you anti-lock brakes, a limited slip diff, and adjustable suspension. This one here is pretty, I guess, low spec in that way, but I kind of think it's like the the touring spec. Yeah. You know, you can just take the T-top off. You do have the five-speed manual in this car, and yeah, it doesn't have that much power, but it's fine. It's workable. You're cruising in this Supra. This can apply to almost like every aspect of buying an older car these days. You know, obviously everybody's gonna wax lyrical about the, the the ones that made the biggest headline figures, but sometimes that's not even necessarily the sweet spot of the lineup. You know, Jacob, as somebody who was able to buy a 944, but not a 944 Turbo, I would agree with you. This would be a really interesting, like naturally aspirated sort of, you know, project car, like leave the turbo off of it. I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to turbo the non turbo seven, eight or seven M engines apparently. Uh -huh. But if you could like really build this out with like pistons, rods, just better all round internals and a actually tuned exhaust, not something that just yells, I think it'd be a really compelling uh, little package. I like NA engines. I do like turbos as well, but I feel like NA when you do the, when you build it right, can when be really right. interesting. Thank you, Luis, for not uh, calling the cops considering I stole your car. Um, but I mean, what a wonderful way to roll in with spring here with the Target Top down. Absolutely the nicest weather today. This Target Top is everything. Thank you, Luis. We will see you in the next one. Bye. Not going anywhere.